Okay, so here is the answer to chess webinar. First webinar on um, this particular platform. And what we're looking at is uh, 10 games, 10 blitz games that I played today. Just to have a look at the answer process and try and bring in the concepts that we've been recently working on. Uh, the traits of the um, the levels, the potential viable impact of your moves, the value of the moves, and basically looking at the whole answer process using all the things such as the candidate moves, the checks, captures, threats, support, blocking, and even adding in there the position of your pieces on the board as well. So all of those types of concepts underneath the answer process just to see how we develop in our games going forward. At some stage we have to try and bring all of this information together as one into our games. So this is what we're going to discuss today and we're going to go through each of the games just step by step looking at the movements that we've made, rationales as to why they've been made and we're not really looking at seeing whether we can do better we can look at well did we use the answer appropriately at that stage okay so what we're going to do is we'll start off with the first one and just go a few steps back okay so opened quite steadily with the pawn just then um, trying to manage these particular areas here with the pawn as we know we've um, seen this many times in the videos that we've pre produced previously so that's pretty straightforward in terms of development for that pawn. Then we bring the knight out, potentially looking to attack the pawn, but as we know, it could potentially be a poisonous pawn. So we don't necessarily want to be grabbing it if it's left alone. What we're trying to do is make space for, yes, you've guessed it, the castling process because we want to keep our king safe. That's the idea that we've got behind this particular movement anyway. So the opponent pushes down, always bearing in mind that the movements that we actually make over the board, online, in chess, are based on what the opponent is actually doing. So we're not just doing our moves just to do the moves. We're doing them based on what the opponent has done, what they have given to us. And if we can take advantage of what they've given to us, then we're providing a good answer to their question. So we push through the centre, attacking the centre pawn here. As you know, we try and work around the centre. Um, once we've tried to obliterate the centre, we try and manage the area around the centre. And sometimes we can work in the centre, depending on what the actual opponent gives to us. At this moment in time, it's given us the opportunity to try and obliterate the center so they actually grab so they're going for obliteration of the center makes it easier for us to start putting in place our work around the center of the board so we grab the pawn with the knight and we de develop the bishop now so now we've got space to go and castle all simple straightforward stuff but this simple straightforward stuff can elude um, chess players um, as we get carried away with our potential attacks and we forget that our king needs to be safe so the bishop is out and basically it's attacking the weak pawn which is in front of the king so it's got a nice base for itself at this moment in time ordinarily what you tend to see is maybe the pawns attacking uh, you know bringing the pawns down here it leaves a little bit of a space for the bishop to actually come and harass the king even more. So it's got a nice position at this moment in time. So they bring their knight through. So as we know, their question is, what are you doing with the pawn? So are you going to protect it or, or what? You know, So we're reacting to what the opponent is doing. So we bring our knight through, which is protecting the pawn. Nice and simple, straightforward stuff. That's our answer to their question. So their next question is, okay, so you've brought your bishop here, so do you think you're gonna leave it there so that I can create a platform for my pawn to come and attack your bishop? What's your particular answer to that? Are you particularly bothered about that? 
In the meantime, we're potentially looking to castle kingside safety because we know this is potentially coming. We do have a safe place for our bishop to go. So castling is straightforward. King is now safe. The only downside to this castling at this moment in time is, yes, as you know by now, the king is home alone. So the king, it looks good, it's castled, it's safe for that moment. But we have to then really make sure that it is safe in terms of making sure we attempt to block off any of the opponent's potential attacks towards the king area, if we can. So the castling aspect is the initial, yes, let's get the king safe, but we have to maintain the king's safety. We can't just rely on the castle being the castle and thinking it's safe. So we bring our bishop through. It's a twofold type effect, really. So it's bringing the bishop here, but it's actually in front of our king area as well. So our king doesn't feel as home alone. Maybe with potential for coming here and sitting in front of the king. Those types of things, but it all depends on what the opponent gives to us. If they give us things in the center of the board that we can take advantage of and manipulate, then we'll progress that way. Always being mindful that we don't want our king to be home alone because, yes, the opponent can attack the home alone king. So they start pushing through the center. So this was the earlier question that the opponent was posing with by pushing this pawn. And we did have the answer already prepared and the bishop could just come back and be feel a little bit safe. He could have come here to protect the pawn but keep bringing it here helps it to form a nice defense against the next potential question, which would have been potentially the bishop coming here, attacking the queen. So preempting a potential question, just getting nice and steady with a potential response. That's all part of the answer process in understanding what chess can deliver and what can produce for you can produce for yourselves. So they then pose the next question, which is attacking the knight. So whilst all these pawn moves are actually being delivered, the key question that I'm asking myself is, what's happening to his minor and major pieces in terms of development on the board? Are they actually in the game? Are they doing the rope a and like fighting from the back type thing? doesn't look so at this moment in time so I'm feeling happy-ish that these pawns are being pushed down because what do pushed pawns present for themselves they present spaces behind those pawns and usually the heads of the um, pawn structures can be taken off quite easily if they're not supported So we bring the knight through now, attacking the bishop. In our mantra, the knights hunt the bishops, if it's beneficial to ourselves, of course. Um, so we attack this bishop. This bishop really can't go anywhere. It's kind of trapped. It is, what would you term as maybe the bad bishop? So sometimes you have to be careful, especially towards the end game. If you're going to exchange a good knight for a bad bishop, then that's not a very good exchange. At this moment in time, we're not in the end game, so I'm looking to put the fret on the bishop quite nicely here. So the bishop takes the knight, because he obviously doesn't want his bishop taken. But also we were potentially, we had like a two-on-one situation on the pawn as well. But the bishop immediately takes, so it's actually doing something active, is the bishop. You know, it's got itself off the back, it's taken a piece off the board. So we can grab with our pawn, ele elevating our pawn up towards the king area. Now they bring their knight into the game. So now they're getting activated with their, their minor pieces. So we can bring our bishop and attack their rook. So that's all pretty straightforward stuff. A smaller piece attacking a higher piece. Again, also, it's kind of twofold. The bishop is around my king area. So my king doesn't feel too home alone. We do have sites of potentially manoeuvring the bishop around, getting some activation around onto their knight. There's potential. 
So we bring the rook through now. The rook is now challenging the bishop. It's asking the question, well, if you're going to leave that there, if I double up either with my queen or my rooks on this bishop, it's only got the queen supported. So what's going to actually happen in this situation? And what's going to happen in this situation and when we start attacking this knight here? So I'm starting to formulate my potential questions um, going forward. What's going to happen when we start developing this knight through? Mindful that this bishop doesn't have any protection, but we are aware that the knight would be eventually do this and this. So we're not going to do that just yet. So we need to prepare the situation for ourselves. So the knights come down. So at this moment in time, I'm thinking, oh, I don't know what that was. But then obviously he's attacking our bishop, which makes sense. Nice single attack, attacking the bishop, straightforward enough. We bring our bishop back, now attacking the knight, saying, well, okay, if you want to take this bishop, then there's going to be quite a bit of pressure put onto this pawn. Because we've got the bishop eyeing this up. We've got the queen eyeing up. Yes, he's got two pieces defending. He's got the queen and he's got the bishop. But moving our queen up and then getting the rook behind starts to put a little bit more pressure onto this pawn. That was just the little tiny questions that I was posing in my head. And I was looking to see what sort of answer my opponent was going to pose to my question. So they do actually take. So we grab back with the queen. Now this position here replaces the position that the bishop was going for. Which was looking to play around this area here. We can still maintain pressure on this pawn. Because now we've opened up space for the rook to actually start targeting the bishop to start targeting if we get the queen here here well not there because the knight's there then there's a whole whole heap of hurt coming here so there's a lot of questions going to be asked potentially of this pawn unless of course the position changes so they bring their rook behind their bishop so we start to look to start challenging this pawn as we said because we've got a few questions as to well did he lose a bit of tempo? But I think maybe one of his answers is bringing his rook here to support. But are we going to have too many pieces being able to attack that piece going forward? You know, there's options of attacking the knight and the pawn as well, just to get rid of that knight. So they bring their queen away from the situation. It's still protecting the pawn. But now we've got a little fork going here. We're still maintaining this pressure here on this pawn. So now, if the queen moves out of the way, then our bishop would be able to take this pawn, or even the rook rather, to own the file. So the knight takes the knight. So we can take back with the queen. Now, once we've taken back with the queen, we've got one, two, three pieces on this pawn the opponent's got one two so in essence we would be able to deal with this pawn bearing in mind our rook is facing their bishop as well so if this rook forgets itself and decides to come and protect we'll be able to take the bishop off the board so they bring their rook to um, support even more so now what we're looking to do is challenge this area here with a little bit of a pawn attacking the pawn nice and simple straightforward stuff and the opponent decides to throw the question well are you willing to let your bishop go but all the while we do have this pawn that can deal with on pass on so we push our pawn up supporting our bishop in readiness for any potential attacks here in readiness for supporting any potential attacks on this side here also giving space for our king to just come up it's a basically a flight square so that the king is safe because from this vision there was the potential for checks to be put onto the king winning them tempo so we took the initiative and grabbed the palm and now we're making space, but we didn't want to give up a piece for free. So we're protecting our pawn. All the while, there's pressure on this pawn to the max. Because he's only defending by two pieces at the moment. 
So he pushes down, looking to put pressure onto our pawns here, but either way, we can even it out by capturing on either side. So the answer to those was pretty straightforward. So taking advantage of the weak pawn, because the opponent's um, solution to our question about what you're doing with this pawn was definitely not met. So it basically makes it more impactive when you start throwing a lot more questions regarding what are you going to do with that piece. The more you can compound that pressure onto that piece, the more confusing it can get for the opponent because there's too many things going on on the board. So we grab the pawn and then they grab with the queen. So we grab with the rook now. So we're owning this file here. So we're feeling quite happy that we're owning this file for a moment, but the game is definitely not over. We've got like double pawn situation here, but a highly developed pawn at the top. So basically it's asking the question of, well, how are you going to break through when we do have a pawn majority on this side? How are you going to break through? We've got equalized pawns here, but we can sense the urgency of them wanting to capture here, to capture here, to actually get this pawn off. But it evens itself out because our question is, well, we can actually, our answer is, we can actually take this pawn here with the rook and we don't have any issues. If this pawn pushes down, we can take this pawn here. So there's all sorts of um, answers that we do have in this situation. So they do actually grab and we take and as we said we're running through this scenario the answers were given and we answered back and the rook came down to this particular position here i did think i don't really know what that is but then i did realize potentially he's coming here maybe to attack the pawn here so in answer to that potential question that they were going to ask we bring our bishop here it's also blocking the rook out of the way, but mainly it was to prevent their question to this pawn here. So pre trying to preempt questions as best possible is uh, one of the key things because then it allows you to block off and really improve your position even more within the answer process for your own game. So they push the pawn down. So now I'm thinking, oh, they think this pawn is actually going to get promoted. So we need to take some action and basically try and block that off. So it's probably going to lose a bit of tempo. Um, I can probably think his question is going to be, okay, if you're going to attack our pawn, I'm going to attack your pawn. And he attacked with the bishop, which I, I didn't put into my roller decks. I thought it was coming with the rook. But either way, we can capture. So now it's... We're a pawn up at this moment in time. It is a doubled pawn, but it's a highly elevated pawn. So now just bringing the king into the game. This is going to be like a fighting king. Got to have that mentality to say, okay, let's transition now into the end game as best possible, as safely as possible. And the king needs to be involved. So now they're pushing their pawns down. To me, I didn't think that was a good finishing move or anything it was a, a blocking move i suppose in a way but we come up with a check just to improve our position so now our king can come and attack their rook and as you can see the time stamps showing two minutes and two minutes each so uh, still plenty of time to go so they bring their rook out of the way so now we can challenge the bishop so now this is looking positionally same. So what, what are you actually doing with the bishop? The bishop doesn't have any protection on. So they go for a safe haven, but again, the bishop doesn't have any protection on. So the rook can just keep asking the question of the bishop. Then it gets to a potential safe area. And we say, well, what are you going to do about this situation? But after I did it, I realized his rook can put a check on us. So we just bring the bishop back and block. Then the bishop's attacking and I'm hoping and praying that his bishop gets pinned to his rook because when they're under time pressure, when it starts, you know, he's on one minute something at the minute. So we attack again because the bishop doesn't have any protection. And then they bring their bishop in front of their rook and then we go for the pin and that's when the opponent resigned. So eventually keep asking those questions of the pieces and keep on wearing the opponent down with the position 
asking those questions as are you protected is your king safe are your pieces safe are the spaces around your king safe are the spaces around the key pay, um, key pieces safe and slowly develop and build in the answer process using the concepts um, that we discussed previously so we'll go on to the next one there's a series of 10 games that we're going to go through today so it is a long webinar and hopefully at the end of the day um, develop a little bit further within our chess okay Okay, this is the next game in the answer webinar and um, we're playing as black here so the op opponent pushed through into the center you know as we do you know just uh, trying to get those controls going in the center and they push through again so it's a nice aggressive opening just trying to either manage and control and get the pawn down further to try and really sort of control the center in a way uh, in our heads we're going no we'll just take this piece off the board thank you very much and um, we're not interested in having any pieces in the center of the board if we can help it so again they're going for more of the gambity type stuff and as we've said before uh, you can take it yeah but you do lose out in developing your own pieces and that's a key thing throughout the answer process is that we want to be able to maintain development of our pieces rather than letting the opponent control and dictate how we work around the board gambits sort of in a way are like controlling you because they're like going oh here's a free gift take that oh here's a free gift take that and then all the while the opponents opened up loads of space for their pieces to then just come in and take advantage of you so be very careful with gambited stuff if it's a pawn take the first one but then after that just look to develop your pieces especially as a beginner and um, you know as you get better you can probably start taking all the pieces off so because then you'll understand the patterns that are being put in place and the sort of downsides to actually the position that you're in and also the pluses as well so i know an engine would basically just take that pawn off the board there but we're not interested in that okay so they capture so now they're they've got that center control with the pawns you know like uh, normal chess players go for which is we're not interested in that we want to manage around the center okay so we bring our knight up attacking the pawn we're fairly comfortable because we've got our pawn blocker here um, against this pawn here so they develop the knight and we develop our bishop so now we've got space to basically go and castle for king safety it's the whole idea keep your king safe as best possible and as we mentioned in the previous one it's not just about castling it's about maintaining protection for your king after it's castled so that it's not home alone and having to defend for itself so the bishop comes through and it's uh, got a nice angle here potentially looking for maybe that fried liver looking type thing and um, so always wary of that so we do grab the palm and this is the position that uh, i totally forgot that i was actually practicing and um, i'm bringing it back into my game again uh, so yeah just taking advantage here and then just pushing through onto the 
two pawns with a little bit of a pin type fork thing with the pawn. So it's always quite nice to see that type of situation. But it, what it does do is, as it is a pawn move, it does allow the opponent to still develop further in the, in the game. As you can see, my pieces are still on the back, but we're still going to win a minor piece out of the situation. Okay, so we grab the bishop, and at this moment in time, feeling fairly comfortable. Obviously, not too worried that my, bishop, my pieces aren't out because we have space for them to get out, so they're not jammed in in any way. And at the moment, our opponent's pieces are not really asking any major questions of, of us. So we don't need to worry too much about our position because there's no threats that we can see that are worrying us. So we can bring our bishop through now, attacking an unprotected knight. So that's my question to the opponent. What answer do you have for your undefended knight? So they bring their pawn down. So we bring our bishop through, attacking their unprotected king. So the question to them is, okay, what are you going to do about your unprotected king? Castling should be done first, as early as possible, or king safety. So they're losing a bit of tempo now in terms of developing their pieces in my head. So they bring the bishop through and we take the bishop off. So now we've got quite activated um, in a more positive uh, fashion. So now the knight's coming through, putting a two on one onto this pawn. Asking the question, okay, yes, you've got your knight here, you've got your queen here, but you haven't castled yet. Do you believe you're going to have tempo enough? Maybe we can get our queen and our rook here. You might have time to get that, but... We'll see. So they bring their rook without going castling, supporting the pawn. So now we're asking the question of, okay, we've got an x-ray through into your rook behind your knight. And you haven't castled yet. And if you go and castle, maybe we'll get your pawn doubled up in front of your king, weakening your king, Gary. So there's potential question there. And um, what is the opponent's answer? They bring their queen attacking the bishop. So now we can bring our rook attacking the undefended king yet again because the king hasn't castled. So we're winning quite a bit of tempi at the minute. And it's nothing great at the moment. You know, we're not shaking the world with these moves. But we're being annoying to the opponent because we're asking questions all the time. Especially about his own castled king. So the king moves, a bit shocked at that particular move actually, but um, the king moved anyway. So in a, in a sense he's blocked his rook. And so we take the knight off the board and double the pawns up. Did think he was going to take with the queen, but didn't take with the queen. So now we're looking to get our queen activated. Maybe swinging it across here. Maybe looking to, wait, steady up. <laughs> Maybe looking for a queen exchange of some sort. Maybe bringing the pawn here, attacking the queen. All sorts of questions at this moment. But one of the key ones, obviously, is trying to support potential attack on here. Like we did in the previous game. Putting more questions to this unprotected, well, this pawn. So if we've got more pieces on there, then obviously we're going to win out in those exchanges. So the rook moves now. So we've got to be mindful, yeah, because the king is home alone. All right. His rook can't do it by itself. But if it sacrificed itself, and then if our king took, probably wouldn't take, then the queen would be looking to get some activity there. But it's not a final manoeuvre. So I wasn't going to lose too much sleep over that position. So we bring our rook, as we said. The question is really, what are you doing about this pawn? Because once, if we take charge of this, then we're going to be owning the squares and be able to attack his king, potentially. So the queen moves. So as we mentioned before, you have to be mindful. Yep. They're looking for a nice little obvious move. It's an obvious question. But if we're so hell-bent on focusing on this pawn, that would work quite nicely. And it would be checkmate. So we push the pawn up, simple defence, and then the knight attacks the queen. 
So at this stage here, we can squeeze in. Again, this uncastled, unprotected king is getting a lot of trouble from our questions. We're constantly asking questions about this king, getting those checks in there, trying to improve our position and trying to really suffocate it as best possible. So we smaller piece attacking a higher piece, again, asking the question, well, what are you doing with your queen now then? Now that this rook is no longer supporting any potential attacks towards the king area, is their king is in front of their rook, what's the queen going to actually do? So it, it moves back. So now we can take this pawn because there's only one piece protecting the pawn, which is the rook. So now we choose that opportunity to say, okay, well, this question is almost, we've found the answer for ourselves. You've not given that, so you've not provided a solution, so we'll take advantage. So the queen takes the pawn, and we saw that they could take the pawn, but it does it really improve their position? Their king is still in front of their rook. Now our smaller piece is attacking their higher piece yet again. So it's making them do stuff that they don't want to do, putting pressure onto their key pieces. So the queen moves, so they've lost tempo again in our, in our eyes. So now a smaller piece can attack a higher piece. So again, we're harassing with a fork, with a smaller piece, asking the question of their position. So the rook captures, so kind of a delay tactic, but still have to be mindful so we take the queen off the board and they capture and then obviously the stealth ninja queen can actually take the rook and they still continue playing so now we're looking to basically x-ray through asking the question okay at this moment in time potentially we've got this knight and the queen potentially coming to put some pressure onto this pawn what's the answer to that situation so they bring their knight down, so we continue with the knight attacking the pawn, and they do have a solution. So the solution is bringing the knight across, it's protecting the pawn, it's also attacking our queen. <coughs> Excuse me. So we can change our position to then ask the question of this unprotected pawn here. Obviously the rook can come and protect if it needs be, and this knight is really kind of home alone in its own right, but we leave that just for now. So the rook now is looking to come around and attack our king. It's not really asking a direct question. It's like an indirect question. So it's going to take a while for it to actually come out of their mouths and actually ask the question. So we can grab this pawn. So the knight's come down. And the rook can ask the question of the king. But really, I think it's going to make the king a little bit strong. Because it's then going to be able to challenge both the rook and the knight, <coughs> excuse me, and even possibly take one of them off. So it's just adding more strength to the king if that manoeuvre does take place. So the queen captures the pawn and the rook does actually come down. So at this stage here, this is where the king can be really quite menacing, especially against a rook and a knight if they're close together. So they do actually attack, so they're very close together so one of them is actually going to go and he brings his knight up which is quite nice he's attacking a higher piece with the queen so we go for an x-ray through to his rook in a sense just in case anything kicked off in that sense so he moved the rook so we could actually come across now and um, put a check on the king having seen that position earlier on we continued with that particular move and then from there, really, we were looking at coming here and maybe a potential checkmate. And they do actually move there. And really, these are delay moves now that the opponent's making. These questions are no longer questions. They're like a little whisper in a very high wind. So the rook comes up looking to protect, protect the um, pawn. But the king can take the knight. And at this stage here, now the queen can come through. The rook has blocked his own king, so that's a checkmate. Um, a question that had no answer to it. So again, utilising the answer process helps you to find appropriate positions and really does improve the, the value of the moves that you're creating. 
uh, going forward. Uh, we'll go on to the next one. Like I said, we've got 10. So this is a, a very long webinar, but it's here to help me understand my own development in chess uh, going forward. Okay, playing as black in this particular game. And the answer to chess webinar still continues. So this is the third game. Okay, so quickly looking at the questions that the opponent is pushing through. So I don't need to highlight certain squares now. I might just move through the moves now. Um, if you've been at the start of the webinar, then you'll understand why certain moves are doing uh, being done. Uh, in order to control the centre, especially for the opponent, more so. This is a gambiting situation here, and we bring our knight through, just seeing what they're actually wanting to do. And then we take the pawn off the board, okay? So we take it off, just in case it does decide to drop over, and then basically try and pre prevent our pieces from actually working properly, uh, you know, blocking the white square bishop, that type of thing. So there's no harm or foul, but it's job's done now, not looking to defend it anymore. Okay, so they bring the bishop through now, potentially looking for the fried livery type cheap move. Yeah, that type of situation here with the bishop attacking here. So we bring our bishop through, stopping that. So if he did, or they, she, whichever did do that, then obviously the bishop would be able to take the knight. So... That question that they had regarding the fried liver, do you know about the fried liver? That's basically what they're saying. Um, what are you going to do about it? That's our preventative measure here. And So now we push through with the pawn. As we know, we push through this pawn here. This pawn is uh, twofold, opens up the dark white square bishop. It's also saying, well, okay, what sort of question, what sort of answer do you have to this pawn pushing when this knight comes here? So now it blocks that off. So it's blocking off the question of this pawn pushing down onto here. So the knight develops, obviously making space for castling. So that's pretty straightforward. And also asking the question to the opponent. What are you going to do about this pawn? Yeah, because this pawn is unprotected at the moment. So the answer process is not just about you as an individual throwing out the answers. It's also about really asking really valid questions in order to improve the uh, potential value of your moves, the valid validity of your move. And it's really just to get compounded and uh, making sure that right moves are being made, the correct moves are being made at the right time. So the knight comes and defends. So it's basically saying, okay, yep, yeah, that's me sorted. I've actually got a solution to that problem. So his question now is, well, if I bring this pawn down here and if I get it further advanced down the ball, what's your solution to that? Now, in the last game, remember, I said I'm looking to practice this move here because um, I, I think it's really quite, it's quite nice. So taking the pawn here, then the knight comes here and then it avoids that control in the center. When you try other things, you end up getting caught short because then your knight has to move and dance around and stuff like that, which then allows them to have that strength in the center. So I think being mindful of this type of maneuver does help you um, get rid of that little tiny issue. So they capture and then we push through again. So that's twice we've been able to practice that particular maneuver. So it must be a popular position within the chess world. If you can remember to do it, if you forget to do it, that's when you get sort of pressured by the pawns onto the knights. 
Okay, so they, ne they moved the bishop, obviously, so we captured the knight with the pawn, with the lesser piece, and they de developed their bishop and capture. So that's pretty straightforward. Their question is now, are you leaving your knight there to double your pawns up? We don't have an issue doubling our pawns in this sort of scenario. And they don't take advantage of that. They're more fearful of the pawn being attacked, it looks like, which is really quite strange because it's doubly protected, excuse me. Uh, it's doubly protected by the queen and the knight. So in essence, did they lose a bit of tempo by pushing this or have they made space for their queen for a later attack? So we bring our rook through asking the question of the bishop. Yep, because the bishop doesn't have any protection on it. Um, pretty plain as day. Although sometimes you can get confused by thinking that when the bishop's like this, you think, oh, it's protected because the knight's there. You know, when there's a cluster of pieces, you, you think that every piece is supporting a piece. When realistically, when you look a bit closer, you find that one or even two of them aren't even protected at all. So the queen comes to protect. So now we're moving the pawn because obviously he's asking the question of, well, my bishop can actually come and take this pawn with a check on your king. So I'll, I'll get a pawn for free in a sense. So we move the pawn up and then if he comes to attack them, we can just move the king out of the way. There's no problems there. Can't really envisage them doing that because there's no real benefits for them doing that. The knight moves back. That was a very quizzical move. It didn't ask me a question. It didn't, it wasn't a statement. It wasn't a bold sort of in your face. Well, this is what I'm going to do. So we took the opportunity to say, well, okay, um, I will counter this non-question with some presence in front of your king. Now, it might look a little bit strange because we've got this bishop here actually attacking through. But having the queen in this nice handy position here, I believe is quite a good manoeuvre because the king is home alone and a lot of stuff can happen when the king is home alone, as we've witnessed. So the knight comes back again, attacking the queen. So now we can get to our lovely position here. There's nothing dramatic or dynamic about it. It's just the king is home alone. So it's going to make the opponent panic a little bit as far as I can see. So the king moves. It's panicking already. It's moved, but there's no direct attack towards it. So I believe it's lost tempi from our move of the queen. The queen cannot do anything to it at this moment. So it was almost like a, a veiled threat. No, is it a veiled threat? It's a threat that's not even a threat because it can't actually do anything. There's probably a word for that. Um, so we push our pawn up. Acting as a platform, it's basically asking the question, well, if you're going to leave your bishop there, are you happy for my little pawn to just mosey on up and maybe we can start working our pawns towards the king area? He goes for the exchange and I'm feeling fairly happy about that because now, because his pieces don't seem to be working together, this looks really quite beneficial for us. So we capture the queen. And their rook is now in the center of the board. He's not linked up with his other rook at this moment in time. But there's nothing majorly happening at the moment. But his bishop is unprotected. Just from that combination, because the queen was the one protecting the bishop. Yep, so asking, the, he then came and asked me a question about my queen. I went, oh, fair dues. Yep. But what are you going to do about your bishop? Okay, so those types of situational things there need to be catered for as best possible in your games, especially in my games. And when there's no focus whatsoever, these types of things happen. Pieces are left un unguarded, unprotected. So now we're basically developing our bishop. And this question really is about, are you then going to basically let me Double these rooks here, so I've got a nice power base to actually put a bit of pressure onto your rook, etc. Because I'm now looking to trade down. So the knight moves. Again, it's not asking a question. It's not asking me a question. So when you're not asking a question, then 
you're more or less allowing the opponent to then take centre stage again with their question. And that's where you're losing tempo because in a conversation, yeah, if you're talking and then the other person stops talking and you keep on talking, then you're the one who's, if you were like giving instructions, you're the one who's leading the show and the other person's just listening and they, they can't get in. So you want to try and avoid that non-questioning phase and you want to be asking questions as best possible or providing a solution that asks a question. <laughs> so we double the rooks up. And so at this point here, now we do have a little bit of a group of defendees. They've asked the question, which was good. What are you going to do about this pawn? So we've gone, we'll, we'll defend with a, lower, a lesser piece. So there's no issues there. Now the knight's coming back in and it's asking the question of this pawn, as far as I could see. But in our heads, I'm going, I don't have time for you asking questions with the late knight. The knight could have asked the question earlier, but it lost them tempo in terms of, um, well, okay, I'm not going to ask a question now. I'm going to sort of like sit back and listen to what you've got to say. Um, but by then it's too late. So may as well take it off the board, disrupt his pawn structure around his king area. sort of this business oh I'm getting spammed aren't I <laughs> oh, dear. right yep okay fair enough you can spam me all you want um, okay so they grabbed the um, rook and at this point they actually resigned so positionally the material that they were going to be um, we were going to be owning this file so it's going to be potentially a little bit harder work for them to get back into the game so really quite interesting development on that with the answer process again looking at gaining those um, potential value um, moves and really try and work in the pieces together consistently and looking at the weak areas uh, on the board basically and just asking questions constantly asking questions and trying to make your solutions ask questions as well uh, rather than sitting back and waiting for the opponent to then ask you more questions by that time it's too late okay so take a break i said i did say there was 10 i'm going to break this seminar up so i think that was the third one so we'll break this one up and then we'll come back later on today <laughs> 